mainly based on arterial enhancement patterns. I'm not saying that this is the only way to approach liver lesions, but this is one way uh, that can be helpful in many cases. So the diagnostic sets are diffuse arterial enhancement, mosaic enhancement, target enhancement, ring enhancement, peripheral discontinuous enhancement, and peripheral enhancement with peripheral washout. So let's start with diagnostic set number one, diffuse arterial phase hyper enhancement. And let me just start with a warning. Uh, you'll see that there are six diagnostic sets we will review. This one is by far the longest. So if in 20 minutes or so we're still on diagnostic set number one, please do not panic. My lecture will not be four or five hours uh, long. Okay. So what do I mean by diffuse arterial phase hyperenhancement? I mean that the nodule enhances throughout. Uh, the outer third enhances, the middle third enhances, the sort of in-between part enhances. The enhancement might be homogeneous, as shown on the schematic on your left, or it might be heterogeneous on the schematic on your right, but the key thing is that the whole thing is enhancing. So this is a prototypical example, 39-year-old woman. She has a normal liver, other than the presence of a six-centimeter mass, uh, homogeneously, diffusely, uh, hyper-enhancing, uh, growing in uh, the junction of segment uh, two and three as demarcated by this arrow. So notice that this mass has diffuse hyper-enhancement, that it's quite homogeneous. Notice especially importantly that in the portal venous phase, this mass virtually disappears. And if you only had the portal venous phase, you might imagine on a busy day, you might go through that image and you might actually miss that mass entirely. So hold on to that, the mass that disappears in the portal venous and delayed phase. This mass has no capsule, the mass has no areas of necrosis or heterogeneity, or, and although it can be tough to see on CT, no obvious fat. So those are the descriptors. What is the differential diagnosis for a lesion like this? Okay, so the differential diagnosis in the upper left-hand corner of diffuse enhancement in the arterial phase is as follows. Far and away, when you see diffuse hyperenhancement, you should think a hepatocellular lesion. And the hepatocellular lesions that you should think about are focal nodular hyperplasia, hepatocellular adenoma. In the setting of Bud Chiari syndrome, a hypervascular regenerative nodule. In the setting of cirrhosis, HCC. And very rarely uh, in the setting of non cirrhosis, fibrolamellar uh, HCC. Now, occasionally, diffusely enhancing masses are not hepatocellular and the differential includes small, rapidly enhancing hemangiomas and small, so-called hypervascular metastases. So hemangiomas that are up to about 15 millimeters can enhance homogeneously. Once they get bigger than 15 millimeters, they very rarely enhance homogeneously. Metastases up to three centimeters, if they're of hypervascular origin, can be homogeneous but no self-respecting metastasis bigger than three centimeters will allow itself to be homogeneous because any self-respecting metastasis bigger than three centimeters will start to develop internal ischemia or necrosis and will not appear homogeneous on imaging. As a pitfall, not everything that appears homogeneous is a mass. Occasionally, we have perfusion abnormalities, so-called transient hepatic enhancement differences or THEDs. So, which do we favor here? Well, this is a real mass, so it's not a transient hepatic enhancement difference. Uh, this is way bigger than 15 millimeters or three centimeters, so it's not a hemangioma or a MET, and so it's a hepatocellular lesion. Which do we favor? Well, let's review again that this is a young woman and this lesion disappears in the portal venous phase, and so the most likely diagnosis is F and H. So the teaching point. Uh, two, a large diffusely enhancing mass is likely hepatocellular if it's homogeneous in the arterial phase and if it disappears in the venous phase, it's most likely a focal nodular hyperplasia. Now, can you make the diagnosis with 100% certainty of focal nodular hyperplasia in this case? The answer is no. But in your report, you can say this lesion is highly likely to be a benign 
uh, focal nodular hyperplasia, consider additional imaging to confirm, and you might want to do a contrast enhanced ultrasound. You might want to do an MRI with, um, with uh, a hepatobiliary uh, agent. But in your report, you can reassure the patient and you can reassure the patient's physician that this is likely uh, a benign focal nodular hyperplasia. Now, focal nodular hyperplasias do occur in men, although uh, less common than in women. And this is an example now on MRI of a diffusely hyper-enhancing mass that disappears in the portal venous phase. In the absence of cirrhosis, and this man had no cirrhosis, the diffuse enhancement with the portal venous uh, disappearance favors FNH, same teaching points as on the previous study. Can I again say with 100% certainty this is an FNH? Not based on these images alone, but I can suggest it. Now here is an example of a lesion that shows fairly homogeneous enhancement in the arterial phase, but this lesion does not disappear in the portal venous phase or delayed phase. It quote unquote washes out in part to become darker than the liver and notice that it's heterogeneous in the portal venous phase and delayed phase. So you would not want to call this an FNH. You definitely would want to get additional uh, workup. So the teaching point here is that if it does not disappear in the venous phase, must consider other entities including hepatocellular adenoma, and that's what was done. In this case, the patient was brought back for an MRI with a hepatobiliary agent, and this lesion at, at three hours after the administration of gadolinium bopta diffusely takes up the agent, uh, confirming in this case uh, that this was a focal nodular hyperplasia. Now, do you need to use hepatobiliary agents to diagnose FNH? No, you don't. If a lesion has an appearance like this with an extracellular agent, you can make unequivocal diagnosis of focal nodular hyperplasia. So notice here that we have a mass that diffusely hyperenhances in the arterial phase. And notice that the enhancement is homogeneous except for the central scar and the radiating network of fibrous septa that do not enhance in the arterial phase. So this focal nodular hyperplasia is actually composed of multiple subnodules separated by fibrous bands and scars, but each one of the subnodules enhances to the same extent. Notice that this mass virtually disappears in the portal venous phase, and by five minutes and 10 minutes, the mass has essentially disappeared with the exception now of this central scar that is now enhancing with the extracellular agent. And the reason for that enhancement is that that scar is not just fibrous tissue. That scar has watery spaces and venules and large extracellular spaces, and the extracellular agent gradually pools in those extracellular spaces, uh, causing enhancement of the scar on the delayed images. And it's that wateriness that also causes the so-called scar to look bright on a T2-weighted image. So if you see this combination of findings, uh, you can come down very hard on focal nodular hyperplasia. This patient does not need to come back for additional imaging um, in the absence of symptoms or other clinical uh, concern. So in summary, these are the findings uh, that we just went over. But the other thing that you'll notice, and this is something that my friend Hero Hussein taught me, is now I don't know if you guys eat popcorn in Australia. We eat a lot of popcorn in the United States. And notice that this uh, FNH looks a lot like popcorn. So when you see a lesion that looks like popcorn, think uh, FNH. And Dr. Clausen, now I know you're probably embarrassed for us radiologists that we rely on signs like the popcorn sign of FNH. I'm sure in pathology you're more sophisticated than this. But anyway, we, we do what we can. We have you have popcorn sign too, but, but for FNH or for something else? No, for, for, Hodgkin's. for Hodgkin's disease. OK. So if you're a pathologist and you see popcorn, think Hodgkin's. If you're a radiologist, think FNH. OK. It's very context dependent. Uh, this is just another example of the diffuse hyperenhancement of FNH, which is homogeneous except for the areas of central scar and fibrous uh, septa. Now, on the previous slide, I mentioned that delayed enhancement of the quote unquote central scar can be helpful. The teaching point is that MRI uh, with an extracellular agent is more sensitive to the enhancement of the central scar than CT. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that MRI is always better than CT. I'm just saying that MRI is more sensitive to the enhancement of the central scar than CT is to the same enhancement. And why is that? Well, on these two images, the CT is on your left, the MRI is on your right. Look at how well you can see the blood vessels on MRI compared to how well you can see the blood vessels on CT. So MRI is more sensitive to gadolinium 
then CT is to iodine. So anything that enhances with iodine and enhances with gadolinium will better be seen on an MRI than it will on a CT. So what's the practical teaching point here? The practical teaching point is that if you do a CT and you think it's an FNH but you're not positive, doing an MRI might be a very reasonable thing uh, to do next. Now, if the central scar is nicely demarcated with an extracellular agent, look how well the central scar is demarcated with a hepatobiliary agent in the hepatobiliary phase, in this case, gadozetate disodium. Now, some of you might be wondering why is this uh, central scar uh, not uh, enhancing on gadozetate disodium. So remember, the central scar co is composed of fibrous tissue and extracellular spaces. It's not composed of hepatocytes. So on the delayed hepatobiliary phase images, the central scar uh, will not enhance. Now, incidentally, uh, this has received incomplete attention in the radiology literature, but one of the nice things about hepatobiliary agents is not just that whether they show that there is retained uh, hepatobiliary transport, but it also shows the internal architecture of the FNH to great advantage. Notice how much better you can see the internal architecture of the FNH on the image on your right than you can on the image on the left where it looks quite bland. And looking at that internal architecture can be quite helpful, so helpful that in fact I want to give you a few more examples of the types of architecture that you can see in the hepatobiliary phase with a hepatobiliary agent. So this has received incomplete attention in the radiology literature, but do pay attention to the architecture. When you see a central scar and this radiating network of fibrous bands, you can come down very hard on FNH. Now, this is a case very similar to the one I started with, a lesion that hyperenhances and virtually disappears. I mentioned earlier that you can't unequivocally make the diagnosis of FNH in a case like this. This is a CT, but you can always bring the patient back for MRI with a hepatobiliary agent. And if you look on the image on your right in the hepatobiliary phase, this lesion is retaining the agent and is very likely to be uh, an FNH. Okay, enough on FNH, because you guys will probably kill me if I keep talking about FNH. Let's now move on to hepatocellular uh, adenoma. So here we have uh, a CT, and notice in the arterial phase, that's the image on the left, that this mass is diffusely hyperenhancing. But is this mass enhancing homogeneously? The answer is no. And is the heterogeneity explained by a central scar and a radiating network of fibrous bands? The answer is no. The heterogeneity seems to be more random. So this is too heterogeneous, too random to be a focal nodular uh, hyperplasia. But because of the diffuse enhancement, you must favor a hepatocellular lesion. So in this case, the best diagnosis would be a hepatocellular diagnosis. Uh, now, this particular woman was on birth controls, which even favor, uh, furthers the, uh, the probability. But remember what Dr. Glauston taught us, that if the patient was not on birth control pills, uh, you can also see that she's obese. The obesity itself, in the absence of birth control pills, could also be a risk factor uh, for, F, uh, for adenoma. So the teaching point here, and I should modify this, in a young woman on birth control pills or in a young woman with obesity, a diffusely enhancing mass that does not meet criteria for FNH, think hepatocellular adenoma. In the back of your minds, know that you don't clinch the diagnosis of adenoma in this particular case, and a fibrolomellar HCC cannot be completely excluded. Here is another hepatocellular adenoma. This is the inflammatory uh, subtype. And notice again that we see in this arterial phase image diffuse enhancement but it's heterogeneous, and the heterogeneity is not explained by central scar and radiating fibrous septa, and so we think this is hepatocellular, but not an FNH. And as Dr. Clausen said, these hepatocellular adenomas, uh, these inflammatory hepatocellular adenomas tend to have telangiectatic change. They tend to have dilated sinusoids, so they hold on to the contrast on the delayed images. So notice that at five minutes and 10 minutes, most of this mass <coughs> is um, hyper-enhancing relative to the liver. <clears throat> now, at the three, uh, sorry, at the four to five o'clock position, you'll notice that there's an area of darkness uh, in this lesion, which on the in and out of phase images was fat. So notice that these uh, inflammatory hepatocellular adenomas can contain a little bit of fat, but unlike the HNF1 alpha inactivated uh, adenomas, they're not diffusely uh, steatotic. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, again, hepatobiliary agents can be helpful if you're not sure between adenoma and FNH. Uh, the image above is an, uh, is an FNH. The image below is an adenoma. But do a mental exercise. 
Look at the arterial phase images only on the patient on the top and the patient on the bottom. And if you only had those arterial phase images, would you be able to know which one was the F and H and which one was the adenoma? I think the answer is no. So it's only by looking at the temporal sequence and seeing that the lesion on the top retains the gatozetate and the lesion on the bottom doesn't that you can make uh, that distinction. Teaching point in the published literature, although there's not too, many, too much literature on this, but in the emerging published literature, over 90% of FNHs are iso or hyperintense in the hepatobiliary phase. Uh, over 90% of adenomas are hypointense in the hepatobiliary phase. And not mentioned in the literature, but important to know, is that FNHs tend to also have this particular architecture uh, as shown on the image in the uh, top right. Okay, now let's move on to a different background liver. This is a patient with Bud-Chiari uh, syndrome. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be able to guess from these images alone that this patient is Bud-Chiari, but you'll need to take my word for that. And what I want to point out is if you look at the image in the top left, the pre-contrast image, uh, there's a small bright nodule in segment uh, four uh, slash eight of the liver. That uh, nodule hyper-enhances diffusely in the arterial phase holds on to contrast in the portal venous phase and then sort of fades to isointensity in the uh, delayed phase. So what is the differential diagnosis uh, for this? So very important to know that patients with Bud Chiari tend to develop regenerating nodules. These regenerating nodules are characteristically bright on T1 and these nodules can grow. And these nodules are very rarely malignant. So in the setting of Bud Chiari, if I see a T1 bright nodule with diffuse hyperenhancement, uh, I think that it's likely benign, um, but there's a conundrum here, right? Because what do you do with a likely benign lesion? You typically follow it, but what do these lesions do when you follow them? They grow. So why do I follow them? I follow them not to assess growth because they all grow. I follow them to see if the imaging features change. So if the imaging features change, if a capsule forms, if there's more washout, more heterogeneity, more diffusion restriction, that's when I'm concerned that one of these might be undergoing malignant transformation and we would biopsy only the ones that are showing a change in appearance, not just change in size. Uh, teaching point, in Bud Chiari, hyperenhancing mass is very common. If they're less than four centimeters and as long as they're not changing in appearance, they're very likely to be benign. Let's move on to cirrhosis. We now know a lot about HCC. We know that there's such a thing as early HCC, which often does not hyperenhance, and there's progressed HCC, which has pushing or expansile growth, arterial phase hyperenhancement, washout, and capsule appearance. So this is an example of a progressed HCC. Notice that in the arterial phase, it has diffuse enhancement, somewhat heterogeneous, but diffuse. The lesion washes out to become darker than the background liver in the portal venous phase in the delayed. And notice that there's a rim of smooth hyperenhancement on the portal venous and delayed phase corresponding to a so-called capsule uh, appearance. So what's the teaching point here? In the cirrhotic liver, a uh, more than two centimeter arterial hyperenhancing mass that washes out or that has capsule or both diagnostic of HCC Biopsy not needed to confirm the diagnosis. Biopsy might be needed if you want to do histologic characterization. Okay, what about this lesion over here? This lesion's also bigger than two centimeters. This lesion does not wash out. If you look at the middle of the lesion at 75 seconds and three minutes, it's exactly the same as the background liver, but notice that this lesion has a very distinct capsule appearance. So again, the teaching point is that if it's bigger than two centimeters, arterial phase hyperenhancing, washes out or has capsule, this one has a capsule but not wash out, diagnostic of HCC. By the way, why the two centimeter threshold? Because as Dr. Clausen taught us, lesions bigger than two centimeters are highly likely to be malignant, so we take advantage of the pretest probability that the pathologists have taught us. What about this lesion over here? This, uh, I'm pointing now to a lesion in segment six at the bottom edge of the liver. Ignore for now all these little perfusion alterations elsewhere in the liver. This lesion is less than two centimeters, but it washes out and it has a capsule, it has both. So the teaching point is that if something is 10 to 19 millimeters, hyper enhances and has both washout and capsule, uh, it is diagnostic of HCC in the setting, of course, of cirrhosis. So if it's less than 10 to 19 millimeters, why do we require washout 
and capsule? Well, because lesions less than uh, two centimeters are less likely to be malignant, so in order to call them HCC on imaging, we need to have more stringent uh, imaging criteria. Uh, this is a 22-year-old woman. Uh, she had a little bit of pain in the right upper quadrant. They thought she might have some gallstones. They did an ultrasound. The good news for her is she had no gallstones. Uh, the bad news for her is she had something much more ominous. She had a big mass in her liver, which led to this MRI. Now, this was initially called a focal nodular hyperplasia because it enhances diffusely. It looks a little bit like there's a central scar in the middle. Uh, but why is this not an FNH? because this is too heterogeneous to be an FNH. And notice that in the portal venous phase and delayed phase images, those are the two images on the bottom, this lesion is washing out. It's becoming darker than the background liver and in a heterogeneous fashion. Also notice that this quote unquote central scar never enhances with the extracellular agent. So this is really too heterogeneous uh, to be uh, an FNH. And so we were very concerned that this was um, a malignant type of hepatocellular lesion, namely a fibrolamellar. And so this ended up being resected, and this was a fibrolamellar. Teaching point, if it looks like FNH, but if it's too heterogeneous, then you can't call it an FNH on imaging alone, and you got to think of adenoma or even fibrolamellar uh, HCC. Uh, finally, I want to point out something else, that elderly men, and even in the absence of cirrhosis, can sometimes develop HCC. So it's thought that HCC is in part driven by testosterone. Clearly, there's a male predilection for HCC. So when you see a large heterogeneously enhancing mass like this in an elderly man, even in the absence of cirrhosis, the first thing I think about, assuming the patient, of course, doesn't have cancer outside the liver, is HCC. Older men without cirrhosis do, in fact, get HCC. And you'll see this as a radiologist. You'll probably see five cases like this a year. Uh, so think HCC. Now, this is not diagnostic of HCC, but think HCC. Okay, now I mentioned that some things that are not hepatocellular can also diffusely hyperenhance. So small hemangiomas can hyperenhance. Um, and th these are sometimes known as uh, flash fill hemangiomas or rapidly enhancing hemangiomas. Two different hemangiomas, two different patients, top row MRI, bottom row CT. Notice that in the arterial phase, these two hemangiomas look very, very similar. They're very small, enhancing light bulbs. Notice that both of them have surrounding them a little perfusional halo that's thought to be due to AP shunting. And I'll get back to this in just a moment. Notice that in the portal venous phase, uh, both remain brighter than the liver. And notice that on the delayed phase, on MRI, it remains brighter than the liver. But on CT, it fades to iso attenuation. So both of these are rapidly enhancing hemangiomas. And the MRI, it's much easier to make the diagnosis because you can see on the delayed phase that this lesion, uh, which by the way is in segment two slash three, remains hyper intense relative to the background liver. It's holding on to the contrast. So then the question is, why does the lesion on the bottom fade in the, poor, in the delayed phase on CT? Well, look at the blood vessels. Look at the blood vessels in the liver on the delayed phase. Look at the blood vessels in the liver on the CT in the delayed phase. So this is a hemangioma. It's following the blood pool. It's just that on MRI, the blood pool remains bright relative to the liver. And on CT, the blood pool fades to iso attenuation. So this makes perfect sense. Let's go back now to the arterial phase and look at that perfusional halo. Hemangiomas that are this size characteristically have halos like this. No other lesion in the liver, this small, characteristically has a halo like this. So whenever I see a small lesion in the liver, especially in someone who does not have cirrhosis and I see a perfusional halo, I think this is very likely to be a hemangioma. And I will often dictate, like on this CT, how would I dictate this CT? Assuming this patient has no cirrhosis, I would say there's an eight millimeter hyperenhancing nodule with a perfusional halo that fades to iso attenuation this is highly likely to be a hemangioma, and I would not recommend any sort of follow-up, assuming, again, that the patient has no cirrhosis and no history of cancer outside the liver. And then for the patient on the top, I wouldn't even give that differential. I would just simply say this is, an, this is a hemangioma, uh, period. But this perfusional halo can be helpful, especially on CT, where it's difficult to see the retention of the contrast on the delayed images. Okay, I mentioned that no large metastasis would ever uh, dare to be homogeneous, but small metastases can be homogeneous because they're not big enough to be uh, necrotic or ischemic. 
So as shown here is a lesion that uh, these are, the images are, I apologize, the jury slides are mislabeled. The image on the left is the arterial phase. The image on the right is the portal venous phase. Notice that this lesion hyper enhances in the arterial phase. And this is an example of a homogeneously enhancing small metastasis. Teaching point, small metastases may be diffusely enhancing. Large metastases are heterogeneous due to central ischemia. Uh, not everything that hyper-enhances diffusely is a mass. Shown above on CT is a perfusion alteration. Shown on the bottom on MRI, same thing, a perfusion alteration. These perfusion alterations are frequently wedge-shaped. And very importantly, notice that the blood vessels run undisturbed through these perfusion alterations, which is your sign that you're not dealing uh, with a true uh, mass. So here's another example of a perfusion alteration, this time with a hepatobiliary agent. Notice in the arterial phase, this is a geographic shape, it's not round. Notice that there's blood vessels inside it running undisturbed. Notice that the lesion is essentially occult on all other sequences, including the hepatobiliary phase at the top right. So why is this important? This is important because sometimes radiologists get this stuff wrong. So here in the late arterial phase, so top row, middle image, you will see a large observation hyper-enhancing. And this was diagnosed by a radiologist as an HCC, this patient has cirrhosis, and this was embolized. The good news is that the embolization cured the patient of this uh, abnormality, but what was this abnormality? This abnormality was not a mass. This abnormality was a perfusion alteration, and your clues are the wedge shape, and then if you look at the bottom row of images, you'll see the blood vessels running through the area of this abnormality undisturbed. Okay, so now we can congratulate ourselves that we finished diagnostic set number one, uh, and we will now march much more rapidly through diagnostic sets uh, two uh, through six. So if you survive diagnostic set number one, I think, I think we'll home free. Diagnostic set number two is mosaic enhancement, and by mosaic enhancement, I mean nodules that are composed of inner nodules or inner compartments. Uh, so the, nod the inner nodules are demonstrated on the left, the compartments are demonstrated on the right, and of course you might have a combination of nodules and compartments. On imaging, these different nodules will have different imaging features, they might enhance differently, they might have different diffusion, they might have different fat content, and same thing for these compartments. Very importantly, notice that these inner nodules and these inner compartments are distributed randomly. There's no rhyme or reason for why some of the nodules are smaller and larger and where exactly they're located. So when you see random intranodular nodularity and compartmentalization, think mosaic enhancement. So here's an example of a mosaic enhancing mass in a 76-year-old man, previously healthy, normal liver. We already learned a few minutes ago that elderly men with normal livers, if they have diffusely hyper-enhancing masses, think, although you can't prove it, think hepatocellular carcinoma. So notice that in the arterial phase, this mass has different compartments. You see like an inverted Y that's darker. You see other areas that are brighter. You see vessels coursing through this, but these vessels don't look normal. They look corkscrewy. They look heterogeneous in size and shape, and they don't seem to have a normal, um, a, a normal anatomic distribution. If you look at the image on the right, the portal venous phase, you now see some internal fibrous septa. You see an outer capsule. You see that some of these nodules that you saw in the arterial phase are now washing out, but some of the nodules are not. And there's a random distribution of these various compartments, various internal vessels, various fibrous septa, various nodules, et cetera. So the randomization tells us that this is mosaic. Okay, so what is the differential diagnosis for mosaic enhancement? Uh, it's a very, very short uh, differential. This lesion is either a hepatocellular carcinoma, such as HCC or fibrillomellar HCC, or uh, it might be a conglomerate metastasis. Okay, that's it. That's your differential diagnosis. So the most important thing I can say about this slide is, would you want to have a mosaic mass in your liver? Because if you do, your choices are HCC, fibrolamellar HCC or metastasis. So that's the key teaching point. Uh, in this case, this is most likely an HCC because the patient is previously healthy, he's elderly, he has no cancer outside the liver, so HCC is the most likely diagnosis. But the teaching point is that mosaic masses are malignant. 
And if there's no extrahepatic primary, think HCC. So why do HCCs have mosaic architecture? Well, Dr. Clausen can talk about radiology, so now I'm going to embarrass myself by talking about pathology. But in the same way, as Dr. Clausen mentioned, these progressed HCCs have internal nodules of varying degrees of progression. Some of the nodules might be early HCC, some might be more progressed. There might be some areas of hemorrhage or necrosis. There might be some areas where there's biliary retention. There might be some areas where there's not. If you look at the image on your left at the 4 o'clock uh, position or 5 o'clock position, you'll see that there's a little uh, satellite nodule that seems to have invaded through uh, the tumor capsule. Uh, again, the image on your right, same thing, multiple internal nodules. So just like uh, on pathology, the pathologist might see internal nodules of different pathologic appearances, we on imaging will see nodules of different imaging uh, appearances. And this mosaic pattern is so important that I'm now showing you CT and MRIs of multiple different mosaic patterns. I'll pause here for a second to allow you to sort of go over all of these examples of mosaic enhancement. Uh, commit these sort of patterns uh, to memory, and the next time you see a mosaic mass uh, in the setting of cirrhosis, you'll know it's an HCC, but even in someone who doesn't have cirrhosis, you can strongly suspect uh, HCC. Now again, a pitfall is that metastases, which typically have rim enhancement, can sometimes conglomerate together like the central mass I'm seeing showing you here, and it might look a little bit mosaic as if though it has nodules within nodules and random uh, compartments. So conglomerate metastases can look mosaic, but notice that it's not usually a source of confusion because you usually see other lesions in the liver that are more characteristic of uh, metastases. But just to prove that metastases and HCCs can have mosaic appearance, I now am going to show you some mosaic tumors. You'll notice that some of these lesions are bordered in green, and some of these lesions are bordered in a strawberry color. And I want you to think which ones are the metastases and which ones are the HCCs. So are these HCCs or are these metastases? And the next question is, are these HCCs or are these metastases? So if you can tell me with 100% certainty, uh, then you are clearly a very, very good radiologist because I certainly can't tell you. Uh, so I have to cheat. And ah, there it is. The strawberry ones were the metastases and the green ones were the HCCs. Okay, but anyway, mosaic masses are malignant. That's the key point. Okay, let's now go on to diagnostic set number three, target enhancement in the arterial phase in which there's a thick rind of enhancement along the outer half or outer third of the mass. The inner edge of this target, the inner, uh, I'm sorry, the inner margin of this rim might be sharply defined as shown on the image on your left or ill-defined and blend imperceptibly toward the, the, uh, the nodule center as shown on the right. But this is what I mean by target enhancement, thick rind of enhancement in the arterial phase. So here's a prototypical example, 48-year-old man, normal liver. This guy, by the way, was a, a Navy uh, SEAL. Um, and he was now 48, but when I did the MRI on him, he was very insulted when I asked him uh, to uh, breathe in and out before the breath holding. Uh, he asked me to simply tell him to just stop breathing whenever I wanted him to. And so these three images were acquired by me saying to him, stop breathing, and we then imaged him for 90 seconds. And at the end of 90 seconds, I told him he could breathe again, and he was disappointed that he couldn't hold his breath uh, any further. Um, so at any rate, uh, this guy was a previously very healthy guy, but his liver's not looking so good. He's got lots of masses in the liver, and I want you to focus your attention on the one at the junction of segments 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's that big mass on the left edge, uh, well, actually, the patient's right edge of the liver. So notice that this thing has a thick rind of enhancement in the arterial phase, an area of central necrosis that never enhances even in the portal venous phase. So what is this mass? Now, I'll give you a little clue that there's a finding outside the liver that potentially might clue you into the diagnosis. Uh, but I won't tell you what it is quite yet. I'll allow you to think about it. Okay, I've allowed you to think about it. So I draw <laughs> your attention now to the pancreas, and there's a very heterogeneously enhancing, hyper-enhancing mass in the pancreas. So uh, this is a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas that has uh, metastasized 
uh, to the liver. But uh, let's pretend we didn't know that and go over the differential diagnosis of target enhancement. So the most common cause of target enhancement is metastasis. An uncommon cause of target enhancement is HCC or intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. That's it. That's your differential diagnosis for target enhancement. So just like mosaic enhancement is a very bad thing to have, target enhancement is a very bad thing to have. Those are your choices. You choose which one you'd rather have. Uh, so that's, in this particular case, the, the presence of the pancreatic mass is what allows us to make the diagnosis of a metastasis. Teaching point, target enhancement is malignant. So here are a few more examples of target enhancement. CT, top left, neuroendocrine mets, MRI, top right, uh, colorectal cancer metastasis, CT uh, on the bottom, uh, a breast cancer metastasis. So target enhancement is a feature of metastatic disease. But target enhancement can also be seen in hepatocellular carcinoma, as shown on the image on your left, and cholangiocarcinoma, as shown on the image on your right. So to summarize, target enhancement is either a metastasis, an HCC, or a cholangiocarcinoma. What if the target is skinny? What if you just have a little thin, delicate rim of enhancement in the arterial phase, as illustrated in these schematic drawings and as illustrated in this case? Is the differential diagnosis the same or a little bit different? Well, it turns out the differential diagnosis is similar but not quite identical, so we'll go over it. Here's a 44-year-old woman. She's asymptomatic, no liver disease, and she has a lesion in the liver that in the arterial phase shows thin rim enhancement. That rim enhancement gradually fades to become iso-intense to liver by three minutes. Notice that there's a central area of necrosis that never fills in at all, not even at three minutes. So this is the mass. The patient is asymptomatic. What could this uh, be? Well, let's uh, think about what the differential diagnosis is for ring enhancement. The differential diagnosis is metastasis, an atypical HCC, an ICC, or a so-called hepatoclangiocarcinoma. That's one of the mixed HCC cholangiocarcinomas that Dr. Clausen taught us about. Or if someone has a fever, it might be an abscess or an inflammatory lesion. And if someone has a history of previous ablation, it could be an ablated lesion. But this patient has no history of ablation and no fever, so it's not an ablated lesion. It's not an abscess. That leaves metastasis, HCC, or ICC. Now, I mentioned earlier that elderly men will sometimes get HCCs for no good reason, but middle-aged women don't tend to get HCCs for no good reason. This thing is not obstructing any bile ducts, not causing any capsular retraction, so I don't really like it for ICC. So what could this be? Well, my mentor, Bob Matry, looked at this case when I was fir first year of my being an attending, uh, 2001, and he looks at this case and says, this patient has cancer in the liver. This is a metastasis from outside the liver. He told me to call the patient's clinician. I felt a little sheepish calling the clinician, but I called the clinician. I said, my, my mentor, Bob Matry, says this is a metastasis of the liver. The clinician said, no, you're ridiculous. You radiologists don't know what you're talking about. My patient has no cancer. Uh, but we suggested that they work her up. Make a long story short, she had a mammogram that led to the diagnosis of a mass in her breast, which was a breast cancer. So this woman's presentation for breast cancer was this uh, target lesion or ring lesion uh, in uh, the liver. Okay, so what's the teaching point? The teaching point is that in an adult without liver disease, infection or ablation, an arterial ring enhancing lesion is a metastasis until proven otherwise. So why do metastases have this ring enhancement. Well, this is a nice case. Look at the arterial phase on the left, and you see all these little enhancing areas. All of these are metastases. Notice that the small ones are diffusely enhancing and homogeneous. Notice that as they get bigger, they start forming rings, and as they get even bigger, the rings become more sharply defined. So this is what I meant before by no self-respecting large metastasis allows itself to be homogeneous. As these metastases get bigger and bigger and bigger, they develop central ischemia and necrosis, and they start developing a target or ring-like uh, configuration. Now, if someone has cirrhosis and you see a ring-enhancing lesion in the liver, as shown in the arterial phase in this case, then you don't think metastasis so much. Then you have to think HCC or one of these uh, cholangiocarcinoma or hepatocholangiocarcinoma uh, variants. So in an adult with cirrhosis and no history of ablation, an arterial ring-enhancing lesion is malignant. 
But, very important but, this is not specific for HCC. This could be a cholangio. It could be a hepatocholangio, and there's no way imaging can tell the difference. So this particular patient needs a biopsy, not to tell the clinician this is a cancer, but to tell the clinician whether this is a cholangio or an HCC. So here's another example of a ring-enhancing lesion in segment seven of the liver. We recommended biopsy, not because we had any doubt that this was cancer. We knew this was cancer. We just didn't know what kind of cancer it was. And so this ended up being a sarcomatoid carcinoma. Same situation over here. We see a ring-enhancing lesion over the liver. Look at arterial phase number three, which is the fourth image uh, from your left. Nice example of a uh, ring-enhancing lesion. In the setting of cirrhosis, we know this is cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer it is. We recommended biopsy. This was a cholangiocarcinoma. 69-year-old man with cirrhosis, ring-enhancing lesion on CT. We know this is cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer. We recommend a biopsy. This ends up being poorly differentiated HCC. Here we see a rim-enhancing lesion. We know it's cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer. Recommend a biopsy, poorly differentiated HCC. Another example, ring-enhancing lesion on the outside, a lot of perfusional change along the outside. Uh, we know it's a cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer. Recommend biopsy, poorly differentiated uh, HCC. As a little aside, notice this area of perfusional change around the mass in the arterial phase. Now go to the portal venous phase and the three-minute delayed phase and look at that area where that was subtended by that perfusional change in the arterial phase, and what do you see? You see a lot of little tiny dark holes in there. What are those things? Those are little satellite metastases outside this nodule. Remember that Dr. Clausen taught us that progressed HCCs uh, are, uh, are overt cancers, overt malignancies in which the cancer cells are actually invading vessels and have the capacity for metastasis. So these little nodules we see in the area subtended by the perfusional change are satellite metastasis from an overt malignancy that has the capacity biologically for metastatic spread. Anyway, we knew this was a cancer, didn't know what kind of cancer it was, uh, biopsy, poorly differentiated HCC. And finally, one last one, ring-enhancing lesion in a 61-year-old man, clearly cancer, don't know what kind of cancer this is, do a biopsy, and this was a hepatocholangiocarcinoma. Okay, enough on cirrhosis. Let's move on to someone who has acute cholangitis. You see the same lesion as before, exactly the same, ring-enhancing lesion. In the setting of cirrhosis, no fever, this would be an HCC, or a cholangio. In the setting of no cirrhosis, but cholangitis, same lesion, this is an abscess. And finally, if someone has a history of previous ablation and you see a ring-enhancing lesion, especially if the rim pro uh, progressively enhances from just faintly enhancing the arterial phase to becoming more and more and more enhanced on subsequently delayed images, then you can just say this is normal post-ablation change, granulation tissue surrounding an ablation uh, cavity. So teaching point after ablation, a thin, smooth rim of progressive enhancement is a normal post-procedural finding. Okay, diagnostic set number five. Peripheral discontinuous arterial phase hyperenhancement in which we either have globules as shown on the left or nodule-like areas as shown on the right enhancing. Notice that these globules and nodule-like areas, these pools of enhancement, are along the periphery in the arterial phase. Notice also that they are discontinuous why are they discontinuous? Because these are the entry points of the arteries feeding this lesion. So where the entry points are is where these pools of enhancement uh, form. So what's the differential for this? I think all of us in the room, even I think, well, no, I shouldn't say even Dr. Clausen, uh, including Dr. Clausen, knows from this uh, radiologic description uh, what this is. So why am I going to spend time on this? Well, I want to make a couple teaching points. Um, one is cute and one's important. So let's start with the cute one. So here's a 38-year-old woman with abdominal pain, and she has a lesion in the liver with these globules of enhancement along the periphery that expand in the portal venous phase, expand even further on three minutes. Notice that these expanding globules of enhancement match the blood pool, the aorta, and the portal vein, and the IVC, and the degree of enhancement uh, at all 
uh, phases. So at this point, we can make the diagnosis of a hemangioma, but this was such a cool case, I asked the patient whether she'd be willing for us to have a few additional images taken, and um, I don't know if she did it out of true uh, goodwill or she felt intimidated, but anyway, she agreed. And so uh, we got a few more images all the way up to 20 minutes and notice that this hemangioma fills in uh, completely, um, except for this central area of non-enhancement. Now in the radiology literature, this is the cute teaching point, in the radiology literature you will read that this is sometimes called the central scar of a hemangioma. But hemangiomas do not have central scars. This is not a central scar. This is an area of sort of liquefactive uh, necrosis or cystic degeneration in the middle of this hemangioma. And you can prove that by looking at a T2-weighted image. And when you look at the T2-weighted image, you can see that the center of that hemangioma is super bright. It's liquid bright. So what's inside this hemangioma is liquid, not a central scar. So anyway, please don't talk about central scars in hemangiomas. Hemangiomas don't have central scars. Hemangiomas might have areas of cystic change. Also notice that the outer part of the hemangioma is not light bulb bright, and why is that? It's because hemangiomas not only contain blood spaces, but they contain quite a bit of fibrous stroma. And so it's that fibrous stroma, the volume averaging with the fibrous stroma that causes it to be not quite as bright as the liquid center. Okay, so that's the cute teaching point about hemangioma. Um, and in fact, with peripheral discontinuous enhancement, there's only one diagnosis, it's hemangioma. But, very important but, there's a pitfall. And the pitfall is that tumors with peripheral nodularity might superficially resemble hemangiomas and be misdiagnosed. <coughs> so let's look at an example of that. Here is a patient with cirrhosis hepatitis C, and in the arterial phase, we see peripheral discontinuous nodular enhancement. And one might, on a bad day, think that this is the hemangioma. But look at the subsequent phases. Do these nodules of enhancement expand? No. Do these nodules of enhancement follow the blood pool, or do these nodules of enhancement wash out to become darker than the liver? They wash out to become dark and liver. So they don't expand. They don't follow the blood pool. And in addition, if you look very carefully on the delayed images, there's capsule appearance. So for all of these reasons, this is not a hemangioma. This is actually a hepatocellular carcinoma that in the arterial phase superficially resembles uh, a hemangioma. Notice, by the way, that what we're probably seeing here to some extent are nodules within nodules and maybe an area of necrosis, which is what's giving this uh, HCC the appearance it has. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, this is a pretty e easy case. I wouldn't get that one wrong. But here's a case that a radiologist did get wrong. So this was a patient who was diagnosed on the outside as having a hemangioma. And if you look in the arterial phase images, it sort of does look like there's some peripheral nodularity enhancing, and it looks like some of this nodularity is maybe discontinuous. And if you look at the portal venous image, it sort of looks like these nodules of enhancement are expanding. But why is this not a hemangioma? It's not a hemangioma because the enhancement is washing out. It's not following the blood pool. Notice that it's darker than the blood vessels, darker than the liver in the portal venous phase. So even though this was called a hemangioma, this was not a hemangioma. This was a large necrotic cancer with peripheral nodularity and central ischemia slash uh, necrosis. Um, I believe this was a neuroendocrine metastasis that's delivered. I don't remember the exact etiology, but just be careful. There are cancers out there that superficially resemble hemangiomas. And I see mistakes like this probably five times a year where uh, an, a, a cancer is interpreted as a hemangioma uh, when it's not. Last diagnostic set, home stretch, uh, peripheral washout. Now, what do we mean by peripheral washout? By peripheral washout, I mean a mass that has rim or target-like enhancement in the arterial phase, as shown here. And then in the portal venous phase, the enhancement gradually makes its way from the outside towards the center, and that continues at three minutes and then at five to 15 minutes. And notice that as the contrast goes from the outside towards the inside, what happens to the outside? The outside washes out. So this is peripheral washout with central fill-in, as the periphery washes out, the center fills in. Why is the center filling in so slowly? Either because the center is ischemic or fibrotic or both. So this is what I mean by peripheral washout 
and central fill-in. So here is our prototypical case, 59-year-old man, previously healthy, no history of liver disease. Now I know all of you are thinking, okay, you've already told us that elderly men with no history of liver disease think HCC, uh, and that's true, but this guy, 59, not so elderly. And also, let's look at this uh, lesion a little bit more carefully. So let's look now at the arterial phase and the 15-minute uh, phase images a little bit more carefully. So notice that on the arterial phase, the image on your left, yeah, this thing is enhancing diffusely, but the enhance is mainly on the outside. But more importantly, go to the 15-minute image. And notice that the contrast has made its way from the outside towards the inside and is now puddling in the inside of this lesion. Notice also that this lesion is obstructing bile ducts. Those are the black tubes that you see, black branching tubes outside uh, the mass. Also notice that this mass has a very lobulated appearance. I don't know if you guys paid attention to this, but when Dr. Clausen showed a gross pathology image of, uh, of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, there were some satellite nodules around it as well as some lobulation. So these cancers often have a very lobulated appearance and often will have satellite nodules. So the lobulation, the peripheral enhancing arterial phase, and the central enhancement plus the biliary dilation makes me very concerned that this is a cholangiocarcinoma uh, not an HCC. Okay, but what's the differential diagnosis for this? The differential diagnosis for this is ICC or uh, hepatocholangiocarcinoma. Very rarely an HCC might have this appearance. There are some scurious HCCs, very fibrotic HCCs that will retain contrast in their center, but those are quite rare. Or this could be a metastasis to the liver. So let's look at this differential. ICC hepatocholangiocarcinoma, HCC, or metastatic disease. This is another pattern that you do not want in your liver or in your loved one's liver. Very bad differential diagnosis. In this case, ICC based on the features we talked about before. But the main teaching point is not so much that you should be able to nail the diagnosis of a cholangiocarcinoma here. The main teaching point is when you see the peripheral washout, think malignant. So here's another example of a cholangiocarcinoma showing peripheral washout. And let's now again magnify the arterial phase and the 15-minute images. So again, on your left, you see the <clears throat> predominant peripheral enhancement, in this case, target-like enhancement. Notice at 15 minutes, there's a thin rim of peripheral washout. So this is very, this is very classic for clangio. Notice also that this mass has desmoplastic effect and is retracting the liver surface uh, inward. That's also very characteristic of uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, this is our friend, the Navy SEAL, uh, showing multiple metastases to the liver. Uh, so metastases also can show peripheral washout. Look at the image on the bottom right, the 10-minute delayed image. You can see that the enhancement has gradually accumulated within the tumor center, and it's washed out from the tumor periphery. So this is very commonly seen with metastatic disease on MRI. Now, for those of you who do more CT than MRI, you might be thinking, I don't see this peripheral washout and this central accumulation as vividly as on this image here. So why is that? Well, again, it's because CT is not as sensitive to iodine as MRI to gadolinium. If you look very, very carefully at metastatic disease on CT, and if you really narrow your windows, you will, in fact, see it. I don't know how well this is projecting, but this is a case of breast cancer uh, metastasis of the liver with ring-like or target-like enhancement in the arterial phase. And if you look very carefully on the delayed phase image, the, the image on your right, you will see a very subtle peripheral washout and central contrast uh, accumulation. This is uh, metastatic disease on CT. Now, be aware of uh, the following. This is a patient who was diagnosed by a radiologist as having a hemangioma. And I think the reason this was called a hemangioma is that there's peripheral enhancement on the arterial phase. The enhancement gradually fills in the center and holds on to contrast, sort of following the blood pool. So this is called a hemangioma. So why is this not a hemangioma? It's not a hemangioma for a couple reasons. One is that on the arterial phase, the enhancement is continuous, not discontinuous. But two, I want you to mentally superimpose the arterial phase image on that late phase image, the one on your right. Notice that the area of peripheral enhancement on the arterial phase image is larger than the area of central enhancement on the late phase image. It envelops it. So in other words, the enhancement did not expand. The enhancement moved from the outside towards the center. So expanding enhancement is a hemangioma. 
moving enhancement is malignant. So the teaching point is that central fill-in may be mistaken for a hemangioma if the periphery fades or washes out, if the contrast is moving from the outside towards the center and washing out as it does, that's a cancer, not a hemangioma. Finally, this is a cirrhotic patient in the arterial phase, top right image, we see ring enhancement. Do we see washout? No, we don't see washout. Look at the bottom right image. The lesion is not washing out. It's holding on to contrast centrally, but notice that that outer rim has in fact faded. So this is a peripheral enhancement with peripheral fade or washout, and this is a malignancy. In the setting of cirrhosis, your differential is cholangio, hepatocholangio, or an atypical uh, HCC. Okay, so we have now uh, done our whirlwind tour through these uh, six patterns of enhancement. Uh, diffuse enhancement, think hepatocellular, hepatocellular, hepatocellular. If the patient has no cirrhosis and the lesion disappears, think FNH. If the lesion is too heterogeneous to be an FNH and it's a young woman, either obese and or on birth control pills, think hepatocellular adenoma. If you see a T1 bright nodule in the setting of Bud Chiari, think uh, hypervascular regenerative nodule. You can follow these over time, but don't follow them for growth because they will grow. Follow them for change in imaging features. If in cirrhosis you see a hyperenhancing mass bigger than two centimeters with washout or capsule or both, that's an HCC. If it's 10 to 19 millimeters, it has to have washout and capsule criteria need to be more stringent. Uh, hemangiomas of smaller than 15 millimeters can hyperenhance. Look for that peripheral halo. On MRI, look for retention. On CT, don't be surprised if they fade. No self-respecting metastasis bigger than three centimeters is homogeneous, but less than three centimeters metastases can be homogeneous. The key is the history of cancer outside the liver. And remember that some things that hyperenhance are not masses at all. They may be perfusion alterations. Don't call them cancers if they're wedge-shaped and don't exert mass effect. Mosaic enhancement, horrible, horrible differential diagnosis. It's either an HCC, a fibrolamellar HCC, or a conglomerate metastasis. This is not something you want in your liver. Target enhancement, equally bad, but not exactly the same differential. It's either a MET, an HCC, a cholangio, or a hepatocholangio. Ring enhancement, similar, except that to MET, HCC, and cholangio, we now add in the setting of cholangitis and abscess, and in the setting of history of ablation, ablation uh, response. Peripheral discontinuous enhancement is a hemangioma if the peripheral discontinuous puddles expand, grow, gradually fill in following the blood pool. If those puddles wash out and do not expand, it is not a hemangioma, it is a tumor that's mimicking a hemangioma and potentially fooling you. Peripheral washout, terrible, terrible differential diagnosis. ICC, hepatoclangic carcinoma, occasionally an HCC or uh, a metastasis. Don't be surprised if you see peripheral washout, the better advantage on MRI than on CT. On CT, you can be fooled. The key is that that peripheral rim of enhancement either fades or washes out while the center accumulates, and that's how you can tell the difference between peripheral washout of a, mat, of a cancer versus the peripheral discontinuous enhancement of a hemangioma. So I thank you very much uh, for your attention. If anyone wants a copy, by the way, of this PowerPoint, feel free to email me. I forgot to put my email address here, but it's cserlin at ucsd.edu. Happy to send you a copy of this uh, PowerPoint if it, you think it might be helpful to you. Thank you for your attention.